Welcome everybody in the first seminar after uh, Easter break. Today, today we have a pleasure to host uh, Anna Szymusiak from Jagiellonian University. Uh, Anna is an expert on uh, quantum measurements, specifically sig POVMs, uh, some properties of quantum measurements like uh, information power. Uh, she also has worked on uh, quantum designs in the past. I, I believe, uh, yes. And today, uh, she'll be talking about meromorphic quantum measurement. I don't know what's that, and I'm eager, eager to learn. Uh, please, Aya, the, the screen is yours. Yeah, uh, thank you. First of, first of all, thank you for the invitation. Um, it's a great pleasure to visit Warsaw from Krakow. <laughs> Um, so I would like to present your um, recent work with uh, Wojtek Swomczyński. Uh, it was published in Quantum in uh, September last year. Uh, so the title is uh, Morphophoric Quantum Measurements, Generalized Complexes and Two Designs. And um, I guess that um, a lot of you haven't heard this word morphophoric, especially in the context of quantum measurements. Um, it's a new term uh, that we came up with, and um, I will try to explain uh, what, what it is all about, why uh, we are interested in this um, special type of quantum measurements, and um, hopefully I will show you um, the beauty of, uh, of these uh, measurements uh, hidden in, in the uh, geometrical properties. Uh, okay, so let us start with a very general um, overview um, into the context, the problem here. Uh, so our um, investigation started with this uh, paper by Appleby, Fuchs, Stacy, and Zhu um, from uh, 2017. It was entitled uh, Introducing the Complex a Novel Arena for Quantum Theory. So um, what is the, what does it mean? What is the uh, arena for quantum theory? Um, what, what do we mean here? Um, so if we think of uh, classical probability theory, then the arena for this theory is just the probability simplex. We all know what, is, uh, what it is. Um, we've got these n-dimensional vectors with coefficients uh, that sum up to one and they are uh, non-negative. So we've got just the probability distributions on uh, n uh, states. Um, and if we think of the quantum theory, then the arena is um, in the finite case. Uh, I'm going to discuss here only the finite d-dimensional uh, case. Um, so in the finite case, we've got the states which are represented by some uh, operators. Uh, called the density operators. Uh, so we've got the positive trace one um, operators. Um, and we identify the pure states with uh, the, ex the extreme points of this set. Uh, so from a mathematical point of view, uh, these are just the rank one orthogonal projections. And um, uh, the complex is meant to uh, move this uh, arena for quantum theory from the set of um, operators uh, to the set of probability distributions. So we would like to uh, consider um, quantum theory also uh, in a purely uh, probabilistic uh, way. And um, this is the idea behind uh, the cubism also. So this the, uh, it was formerly known as the quantum uh, Bayesianism. Uh, but actually, even the authors at some point decided that um, naming it after bias was not um, the best idea. It doesn't um, uh, resemble um, um, what, what this cubism is really about. Uh, but um, the idea of complex comes from this, this approach to the foundations of quantum theory. And uh, it is it can be seen as the probabilistic embodiment of cubism. Okay, so uh, how do we transform this quantum theory from uh, operators to 
probability distributions. So of course, the most um, natural way to do it uh, is by the uh, quantum measurement. And um, so we take uh, generalized quantum measurement, a PUVM. Uh, I assume here that uh, PUVM is finite. Uh, so it consists of n operators and effects. And uh, we've got this uh, measurement map that sends uh, the quantum states into the probability distributions. Um, and this measurement map is uh, affine and um, we call the image of the quantum state space uh, by this map, uh, the probability range uh, of POVM pi. So we obtain here um, an affine image of the quantum state space uh, in the n minus one dimensional simplex uh, d tan. But if uh, we want to um, uh, replace uh, uh, faithfully the quantum state space with uh, the subset of probability distributions, uh, we need this uh, measurement map to be one-to-one. -one. Uh, so uh, we would like the uh, POVM to be informationally complete. That's the, uh, the, the equivalent um, um, definition. So in this case, um, the probability range So can you is, comment just maybe for students uh, what informationally complete uh, means um, uh, so it can be uh, it can be described as uh, the measurement map by being one to one uh, so it means that if we have the statistics of the measurement we can uh, uniquely determine the um, initial state uh, or from the purely mathematical point of view it just means that these uh, operators by j uh, span the whole space of self adjoint operators. So that's another uh, equivalent um, property here. Uh, so in this case, this probability range is uh, fully dimensional. So it's d square minus one dimensional, um, which is contained in this n minus one dimensional uh, simplex. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, uh, just, uh, just a remark that uh, this um, informational completeness is uh, very useful uh, in, this tasks, uh, in the tasks of uh, quantum tomography uh, because of this property that um, the statistics uh, determine uh, uniquely the input state. Mm, okay, so here is a simple example in dimension two. Um, it is not easy to uh, provide uh, simple examples uh, in higher dimensions uh, with such nice um, pictures. So that's why I focus here on dimension two. Uh, so we consider here a family of uh, rank one normalized POVMs. Uh, it is a one parameter family. And um, we can see how the uh, probability range Q pi is situated in this um, three-dimensional uh, simplex of probability distributions. So in the case of alpha being zero and alpha being uh, pi half, uh, this probability range uh, degenerates uh, in case uh, alpha being pi uh, half to a segment and in case alpha being zero to a disk. Uh, because for these um, particular values of alpha, um, the POVM uh, is not informationally complete. Uh, but for all other values of alpha, uh, we obtain a uh, informationally complete POVM. And what is here, um, what is here uh, important is that um, here in the middle, we've got um, a probability range which is of the same shape as the quantum state space. Because here we just obtain a ball and uh, as we know the quantum state space in dimension two is just the whole ball. Uh, so 
we can say that um, in this case, uh, this POVM, or actually the measurement map, um, uh, we just associated to this POVM is shape preserving. So it is a similarity uh, between the, um, the, the metric spaces. Uh, and we would like to um, focus on, on this uh, example here. Um, so for this particular value of alpha for which we obtain a ball, uh, it turns out that our POVM uh, is just a sick POVM. So uh, just a short reminder what a sick POVM is in case uh, someone doesn't know or doesn't uh, remember. Uh, so that's a, um, a POVM which consists of D square uh, effects uh, that are rank one and uh, they are uh, normalized and uh, the overlaps between um, any two of them uh, are uh, equal. And uh, of course, um, uh, SIG POVM, it has uh, in, the, uh, in the name that it is informationally complete, so the measurement map is one-to-one, -one, but it also turns out that for any SIG POVM, this uh, measurement map PiPi is shape preserving in the sense that it is a similarity between these two um, spaces. Um, and sorry, when you, when you say shape preserving, you mean uh... Like we have some natural I mean, notions of, of distance or like metric or norm on uh, both, uh, let's say, state space and in this uh, uh, space of uh, probability distribution. So, so when you say say preserving, so you probably mean with respect to like I don't know it preserves. Uh, so, like, so you mean like it's uh, like. Uh, Conformal map, or in what sense is shape preserving? Uh, uh, in the sense that the distance um, uh, um, between two states, um, uh, distance um, defined um, induced by the Hilbert Schmidt inner product, um, is transferred uh, into the standard Euclidean distance in the real space up to some scale factor. I see. Mm -hmm. um, so it is like uh, isometry with some scale factor, okay, um, between these two spaces. Um, well, I, I will come back later also to this um, to this notion. Uh, but what is important here is that um, uh, in this case, uh, when, when we consider the sick POVMs, uh, the probability range is exactly the complex as introduced in this paper by uh, Appleby and others in 2017. Um, they also call it um, the Hilbert complex um, because um, like the general idea of the complex in the uh, paper uh, is a little bit more abstract, but the Hilbert complex um, is like specifically um, corresponds um, to this quantum uh, uh, quantum case, and in this case uh, we've got this d uh, minus one dimensional image of the quantum state space. So this is a full dimensional image, uh, which is contained in this d square minus one dimensional simplex. So we've got um, the image of the same dimension as the simplex we map into. Mm, okay, um, so Sorry, I got a bit confused. What is that? Uh, like, what is the definition of this uh, uh, cuplex? So is it the same as probability range, but it has to satisfy some, uh, some property or? Okay, so in this paper, there are a few definitions of complex. I'm not going to um, explain it all because um, they're a little bit, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Um, um, 
Well, uh, the idea uh, behind uh, this paper is that, um, okay, so th they try to, uh, okay, so for them, uh, this um, complex, this Hilbert complex, it has a probability range for CPOVM, but they try to uh, give some axioms, some abstract axioms that uh, lead to this um, object. So uh, they put some um, axioms, some assumptions on, on some sets, and then they claim that um, from all these assumptions, we obtain this uh, probability range of CPOVM. More or less something like that. Um, however, uh, well, because uh, that's what they want to do. So they put these assumptions just to, uh, but they add some assumptions just to obtain this probability range of CPOVM. Uh, but uh, the reason why we started to think about generalizing this idea is that there is one step uh, in which they um, go um, one step too far. I mean, they uh, may make a conclusion uh, from the assumptions that it's not uh, really true. So that's that was the point. Okay, so what, what if, um, well, I guess they could just add this assumption to the list of the assumptions they, uh, they have just to obtain the CPOVM. But uh, it turns out that without this assumption, we also can uh, produce some more general um, uh, objects here. And, and they also um, have the properties of the uh, complex uh, as defined in the paper. So that's, um, that's like the, um, the general idea here. Okay, but uh, what is this complex for? What, uh, what does it uh, give us? So the, um, the idea, the general idea behind uh, the cubism, uh, at least as uh, I understand it, is that we would like to uh, replace the quantum states uh, with some probabilities. Um, in the way that these probabilities can be used um, to compute the probabilities of any other measurement. And uh, in this approach, uh, they use the CPOVM as the so-called measurement in the sky that provides us with this uh, set of probabilities uh, that we would like to use instead of quantum states. So it is this uh, complex uh, QPI. And um, then this, uh, the, the relation between these probabilities and the probabilities of the um, measurement uh, we actually want to uh, perform uh, are connected uh, by this uh, equation here, of the, which is called primal equation or from Germany, uh, from German uh, Gleichung. Um, uh, may I ask something? Yeah. Uh, like, so is this uh, symmetry uh, like needed to be able to write down such an equation, or like, uh, or maybe what is the motivation for requiring the uh, POV to be uh, S, uh, not only I C? Uh, that's that's my question. Hmm? Uh, okay, so if we have just uh, informational completeness. Uh, then this equation cannot be, be written in such a simple form because mm -hmm. uh, uh, we then, uh, we, I guess, uh, we would need to apply some uh, inversions of some maps and we really don't like to make inverses, yes, because that's um, not an easy task. Um, so the idea here is to make it uh, very easy. Uh, and as we see, um, well, I guess these um, notions here are quite self-explanatory, but just in case. So here we've got um, the probability of obtaining outcome J, given that the measurement pi, so the CPOVM was performed on the input state row. Uh, here this is the same for the measurement xi, so this uh, actual 
measurement, it is called measurement on the ground. And this probability is the conditional probability of obtaining the outcome K uh, while performing the measurement Xi, given that the measurement the pi um, gave us the outcome J. So all these um, uh, probabilities uh, can be computed and, um, and that's the formula that joins them in one equation. So, but, uh, okay, I don't know this philosophy that, that much, but just that if you look at this equation, it might happen that this thing inside the bracket is negative. I mean, probably it happens, right? That it's negative or is it uh, a valid problem? I think it's, because uh, like, in what you said, like you sort of superimpose this interpretation as conditional probability distribution, right? For getting K when you measure this observable, okay, uh, what? It's not pi, it's like sigma, right? Given that you measured J uh, in using the, 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 the CP of EM, right? So, but this equation is not fully at least to me, doesn't seem to be fully in agreement, like with just standard probability, or like unless this thing in the bracket is just a probability distribution, right? But I um, think it's. I, I, I don't understand. So just if we were to mimic, if we were to mimic rules of uh, classical probability. Ah, yeah, for classical right? probability distribution, we would then have here d plus one and. Exactly, one. exactly. Yeah. Minus one yes. over d, yes. Yeah, so that's the difference between um, the classical and quantum case, because in quantum case, we've got the disturbance in the um, state after performing the uh, measurement, mm -hmm. yes. So that's taken here into account. Um, in fact, uh, I will come back to this um, later, uh, but um, here is the assumption that, um, the hidden assumption that we use here uh, uh, the standard uh, reader's instrument. Uh, so uh, no matter what the initial state row was here, if we measured uh, J while performing pi, uh, the post measurement state uh, is given by row J. Um, so the uh, row J, which is uh, pi J from the CPOVM, uh, times uh, one over d, yes. So I think oh, times d, uh, something like that, uh, so that it is normalized to be a pure state. Mm. Okay, uh, but there is a problem with this approach that uh, we do not know whether CPU VMs exist in all dimensions. Um, We've got uh, plenty of um, numerical and analytical evidences uh, in uh, some dimensions. Uh, however, it is still an open problem um, whether um, these sick POVMs uh, exist in, in every dimension. Um, it is common belief that uh, the answer is yes. Uh, however, it seems that we are in not a single step closer to, um, to, the, to the proof of, of the existence. Uh, so what we propose here is to develop um, this qubism uh, without SIGPOVM. And um, it turns out that if we take any shape preserving POVM, uh, it's just enough and we can uh, also um, write down something like uh, um, for any um, shape preserving POVM, and we call such POVMs uh, morphophobic. Um, okay, so now more formal definition uh, kind of. Uh, so uh, we um, add this um, assumption here that the measurement map. PPI is uh, shape preserving, uh, and we mean we mean uh, it in the sense of the similarity. So that's the similarity we discussed earlier. That um, the distance induced by 
uh, the Hilbert Schmidt inner product uh, in the uh, space of uh, self-agent operators uh, of trace uh, one is transferred to the Euclidean, Euclidean distance in the n-dimensional real space. Mm. And in case of morphophoric quantum measurement, uh, we, uh, we, um, we call the uh, probability range um, a generalized complex or generalized Hilbert complex just to, uh, just as uh, Apple B and others did in the uh, paper. So uh, we've got here this probability range that is uh, similar uh, to the set of quantum state space. Okay. And so in, in the case of SIGPO VMs, um, this uh, probability range was contained uh, in a simplex of the same dimension, d squared minus one dimensional simplex. And now um, this probability range is just contained uh, in a d squared minus one uh, section um, of the simplex of the n minus one dimensional simplex. And um, this section uh, is called primal polytope and the affine hyperspace that cut this section from the simplex is called uh, the primal affine space. So we've got here our simplex. Um, A is an affine um, hyperspace, so it's our primal um, hyperspace. And here we've got this delta, so that's the d square minus one dimensional uh, section of the n minus one dimensional simplex. Okay. So if I understand well, now this P of EM won't be extremal necessarily because the number of outcomes would be larger than D squared. Uh, sorry? The, the P of EM that would be, that you allow is not mm -hmm. extremal anymore. As yeah, yeah, have. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Well, it, it has to, um, it, it has to, uh, have at least these square uh, effects because otherwise we won't get the informational completeness. Uh, but of course, it can have um, more uh, elements here. Okay, so um, we have this uh, simple um, criterion for a POVM um, when it is morphophoric. And it is in terms of um, frames tight frames. Uh, so if you are not familiar with these um, um, objects, here is a definition. Uh, I like to think of tight frames as um, generalizations of orthonormal bases, uh, but in a kind of weird way, uh, because um, this, generaliz this generalization is such that uh, we do not longer require um, this set of vectors to form a basis. We do not require um, them to be orthogonal and we do not even require them to be normalized. So ev everything we take from the name of um, ortho uh, orthonormal basis, but um, what, we, what we take um, is that um, the, the very reason uh, why we all uh, really like orthonormal bases, namely uh, the Fourier series or the um, possible identities. So for tight frames, um, we've got the Fourier type series and possible type identities, uh, namely uh, we just got here this, uh, this factor alpha greater than zero. Uh, uh, well, it can be also one, uh, so just like in the case of uh, orthonormal basis, but it can be also any positive number. So uh, that's, that's the definition of tight frame. So here we've got with this uh, Percival type, uh, Percival type um, identity, but we can also write it down in the uh, Fourier type uh, series. 
Okay, and it turns out that um, POVM is morphophoric, uh, which means that uh, the probability range is similar to the quantum state space, if and only if uh, the projections of effects um, onto the space of uh, traceless operators form a tight frame in this space. Um, and in this case, the frame bound and the square of the similarity ratio uh, coincide and um, can be calculated using the traces of uh, effects and of squared effects. Okay, so that's um, a simple, a very simple uh, criterion for the morphophoricity, uh, which um, doesn't um, refer to the uh, measurement map and uh, it just um, takes into account uh, just, the, ju just the effects. So that's very simple. Um, uh, sorry, uh, can I ask something? So that this theorem uh, uh, doesn't settle the, the question of existence of this object, right? Because you don't, uh, if I understand well, uh, if you started from any tight frame, uh, you can formally define some uh, some map that would be uh, like you can formally define of the uh, like of, so like can you for every uh, okay what, what I don't understand is whether for every tight frame in this space of traceless operators uh, whether you can always uh, construct associated. Uh, like POVM to it somehow. Is it always possible or or not? Uh, I think that after some rescaling, because um, uh, you you need to be able to uh, okay because here you've got these traces. Um, I mean, if, if you start with any tight frame, uh, it can be um, the norms of the vectors may be uh, too, too large. So when you uh, move it up, uh, there will never be positive um, maps. So after some rescaling, um, I mean, they can be positive, but they no longer will be uh, upper bounded by the identity. So that's, that's the problem here. So, after some rescaling, uh, there is always a way to um, uh, to, to find a, a morphophoric POVM for which we've got this tight frame here. But the, it is not a, a unique way here, because I think I'm but not sure. How, how would you? Uh, okay, so maybe because I'm interested. How would you do it? Like, because like you somehow do it in a way that you all. Okay, I, we can talk later actually. So, but you say that it's always so the, uh, the answer is like for every dimension, since of course there exist those tight frames for every dimension, because this is just some uh, vector space, the space of traces matrices in, in a given complex dimension. Uh, like, so you say that in every, dimen in every dimension, those morpho morphophoric POVMs. Would exist. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, okay. So there is an example uh, again in dimension two um, of a morphophoric POVM uh, with the property that uh, which is rank one, uh, but the traces of the effects are not all equal. Uh, so we take uh, the the poly matrix matrices X Y Z. Uh, we take the values of A and B um, as follows. And if we construct effects in such a way, then they form a rank one morphophoric POVM. Uh, but we can see that they have different traces. And these two have trace A and uh, not A, but uh, 2A. And these three have trace uh, 2B. Uh, and if we take the projections 
uh, of these effects onto the three dimensional subspace of traces operators. Uh, then we, we obtain uh, this three dimensional space, uh, the vertices of a triangular bipyramid. Um, and it is uh, easy to check that it is, uh, in fact, a tight frame. Okay. Um, And there is also a special case of morphophoric um, POVMs. Uh, so if we assume that our POVM is rank one and of equal trace, uh, in which case we can represent every effect as a subnormalized pure state. So we take pure states rho j and subnormalize them by d over n then the morphophoricity is equivalent uh, to um, Roger being uh, to design. Um, so here is one of the equivalent definitions of two designs. I think the most original one, uh, which captures the uh, property of this two design. Uh, so uh, it says that if we take any polynomial of degree at most two and take the average of this polynomial, of the values of this polynomial at the overlaps uh, of the states uh, rho j, uh, then it is equal to this uh, double integral of, uh, of this, um, this guy here. Um, here, uh, the measure mu is just the unique unitary uh, invariant measure on the set of pure states. Mm. Okay. Um, so, uh, so I, I, I have a silly question because I never mm -hmm. saw this particular definition of a of a two design myself. Okay, like you mean, of course, probably projected two designs, right? Uh, or uh, right or spherical, spherical. Uh, it is a complex projective two design. Complex projective. Okay, so yes, but. Like, it I just I just use the the short name uh, to design. Sure, sure. Yeah, sure. it is it is complex projective to design. I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, right, because I'm sort of I'm familiar with the property that's like <coughs> like averages like this creates let's say averages over all polynomial polynomials in entries of pure states. Let's say of degree two in this case would sort of according to this ensemble of states. Would agree with averages that you get uh, from the higher measure, and here there is uh, yeah, like you have there sort is, of two integrals somehow, which is there like, is I guess like seven or eight equivalent definitions mm -hmm. of uh, this complex projective to design. So um, it's one of I them. guess this one yeah. is um, maybe even not this one is uh, the most. Uh, this is just one of them. Okay. Um, I think the simple, uh, the, the simplest one um, is just uh, connected with the calculations of some overlaps and some sums mm -hmm. and some squares and something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't uh, involve any uh, integrals, any, any averages. Um, but uh, there is seven or eight equivalent definitions here. Um, okay. Mm. So, some example of two designs. Um, so of course we've got CPOVMs, uh, given that they exist. So in this case we've got n um, equal to d squared. We've got complete sets of mutual unbiased bases. In this case we've got n equal to d times d plus one. Uh, we've got some uh, map-like designs. Uh, I will uh, talk about them later. And uh, we've got also other examples like orbits of the multi-qubit Clifford group, group designs, and so on. Okay, now um, just a short uh, overview on the geometric structure of this generalized complex and how it is um, uh, located in this um, in this uh, section of the uh, of the simplex. So. Um, since this complex, the probability range is um, similar to the 
quantum state space, so it is obviously a convex set, and it is sandwiched between two polytopes. One of them we already know, it is the primal polytope um, delta, so that's this uh, cross-section of the probability simplex by the primal affine space. And uh, in case, uh, okay, so here I'm just talking about um, uh, the two design cases, okay? Not about the uh, general morphophoric case. Um, and this cross section is. So, uh, yeah. What is, uh, I, I got to ask, what is, uh, what is the basis polytope and what is primal? The yeah, primal polytope is the polytope, uh, is this. Um, section of the simplex by this primal affine space. So, so what is pri primal affine space? Uh, th that's the space in which uh, our um, complex is located. Yes, so it's just span affine, sp okay, affine I see, span I see. Mm -hmm. of the probability range. I see, I see. So like your like image of your state space would be inside, like would be this, uh, this yellow sort of yellow guy and it's, uh, you take linear span uh, of uh, uh, actually Q pi is not yet here, uh, but yes, but uh, in but I, I've got this affine span. Uh, I mm -hmm. cut the simple the simplex by this affine span. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, delta is this cross section of the probability simplex by this mm -hmm. space. And it turns out that this cross section is medial in the sense that uh, the vertices of the simplex uh, are uh, equidistant from this um, affine, in this primal affine space. Mm, and D, this basis polytope D, uh, is generated uh, by the elements of the two design transformed by the measurement map. So we take uh, the so we take these states rho j uh, that define our morphophoric uh, POVM, our two design POVM, uh, and we take the probability distribution uh, for any the, for each of these states uh, under this um, measurement, uh, and we obtain uh, in this way this uh, polytope uh, D, which we call the basis polytope, and these two polytopes will be. Um, uh, important in a moment. And we can also observe that uh, this basis polytope can be achieved by taking the um, projections of the vertices of this simplex onto the, this uh, primal affine space, uh, and then um, taking the uh, homotety uh, with the center at uh, CN of this uh, of these uh, projections. Um, okay, and um, what is um, important here, what is very interesting here, is that um, these two polytopes, D and delta. So now, just a illustrative figure here. Uh, so we've got this cross section delta of some. Um, higher uh, dimensional uh, simplex. And we've got here this primal polytope D. And it turns out that they are uh, dual uh, in this um, affine space A. Uh, what do we mean by uh, dual? Uh, it means that if we take the inversion of this larger polytope uh, through uh, the center CN, uh, then these two polytopes D and the inversion of uh, delta uh, will be polar. Uh, uh, will be polar with respect uh, to the central sphere of radius M given here. Uh, Sorry, uh, polar, can you debug a bit? What, like, okay, because like the polar, polar is uh, usually the polar is defined to be um, uh, uh, is defined uh, with respect to the um, 
units for centered uh, at zero, we here need uh, some more general definition because we are located in this affine subspace. So that's uh, why we take the center at um, Cn here and we take another radius not equal to one. Uh, but this is purely a geometrical uh, definition. And uh, for example, um, uh, if you take, uh, Okay, I remember from complex geometry, polar, polar of a set was like a set of points in some vector space that has non-negative or something like that uh, inner products with elements in the set, or this is what I remember. Uh, maybe I'm, um, I'm... Yeah, so that's something like that. Well, well it, it, it always depends on... Uh, where do you take this polar, polar uh, in the sense uh, with respect to which sphere? Mm -hmm. But the, mo the most general definition is that, um, so if, uh, if you take this affine space uh, to the linear one, so that uh, C becomes zero, uh, then you've got here just the inner products uh, that uh, have to be upper bounded by S squared. But in fact, we are interested here in the polar of um, that. Um, we take here the inversion of this delta. Uh, so um, that's why here um, they are not polar, they are uh, dual, uh, because here the inversion is also involved. Um, OK. Um, what is important here is that uh, if we take a look at the quantum state space, uh, it is, uh, in this sense, it is self-dual. Uh, so if we take the, um, the inversion and then the polar, then we obtain again the, and the, the quantum state space. Um, so that's, um, that's the property of uh, he, here it is as the property of the oh, sorry of the of the cuplex, but in fact it is uh, the self duality is purely geometrical, so it is a property of the quantum state space. Uh, so these properties here uh, that q pi lies in between some um, some balls uh, are just connected with the geometry of the quantum state space um, because we know that. Uh, it is uh, the, all, all pure states lie uh, on the same sphere, and uh, we've got this uh, central um, ball uh, of the full dimension, which is um, inside, which lies inside um, quantum state space. And so here it is, uh, of course, um, transferred uh, to this um, geometrical um, image of the of the, the cuplex. But, but this uh, duality of these polytopes, D and delta, is something new. It's some kind of external geometry uh, that uh, we, we didn't have uh, in, the, in this purely, um, in, in this, um, uh, in this uh, image uh, where we use just the uh, operators. So that's something new, that's something more. Um, and if we compare our generalized couplex um, with uh, the couplex that was um, obtained by uh, Apple B and others, so the couplex for the CPU VM, uh, we see that there is a lot of similarities here. Um, namely, they also have here two uh, polytopes that are uh, dual. However, in their case, these polytopes have, are just uh, the simplices. So it is um, much simpler geometry. Um, and in particular, the larger one is just the full uh, simplex um, with d squared um, vertices. And they are similar. And in our case, it's not necessarily the case. 
Mm, okay. But apart from uh, this nice uh, geometric properties, uh, we can also uh, uh, have this nice algebraic structure. Uh, namely, if we um, define here by, by q pi with the index one, um, the extremal points uh, of this probability range, so the probability distributions uh, corresponding to the pure states, uh, then we can um, any such vector of any such probability distribution um, uh, define uh, with this uh, three sets of uh, equations. So first one is actually is the system of n linear equations, uh, which define uh, this d square minus one dimensional subspace A. So here we've got uh, too many equations and the number of these equations can be reduced to n minus d square minus one. Then uh, the quadratic form uh, describes the sphere in n-dimensional space um, centered at zero and of a radius square root of do d over n, minus n times d plus one. And if we take the intersection of this sphere uh, with the affine space A, uh, we obtain the d square minus one dimensional sphere. So that's this, um, uh, the outer sphere of the, um, of the um, probability range. And uh, the cubic form just uh, is um, needed to cut the 2D minus two dimensional submanifold from the sphere, which corresponds to uh, the pure states. And the probability uh, distributions uh, corresponded to the pure states. Um, okay. Um, hmm. I'm not sure whether I've got time uh, to talk about uh, like pure VMs. Well, you have like technically something like seven, eight minutes. Can, okay. So it's up to, up to you, Anna. We start that later. Okay, I will try because these Mublake pure VMs uh, are very nice. Um, so, uh, why are they called uh, Mublake? Because ours. Uh, in the case of mutual and bias basis, um, the overlaps between two um, um, states uh, defining our uh, two design POVM uh, are either zero or, uh, or some A. And um, uh, we can associate with such POVM um, the orthogonality graph. Uh, so we've got the vertex set uh, indexed uh, by this by these pure states, and uh, the adjacency relation um, is defined by um, um, putting the edge between two uh, vertices, even only if they are orthogonal. Um, and it has been proved by Moimeyer or Hogar. It's, um, there are a few, uh, well, uh, Hogar, um, papers by, by Hogar are uh, like published articles. And this paper by Neumeyer is actually, uh, uh, these are actually notes from his lecture, I think. Uh, so it's, that's why uh, we've got here uh, two uh, names. Um, but um, we proved that uh, this graph is a strongly regular graph. Uh, so a graph that is uh, fully, um, uh, not fully, but that uh, for which the number of vertices uh, adjacent to a given vertex um, is constant. And so is the number of vertices adjacent to a pair of adjacent vertices and res respectively not, not adjacent. And here is an um, example uh, for 
um, dimension five, uh, in which we've got 45 uh, states. So we've got 45 vertices. And here in this graph, uh, each uh, line or each curve um, represents uh, one orthogonal orthonormal basis. So uh, in fact, we've got here uh, edges uh, also from this point to this point and from this point to this point and from this point to this point. But just for simplicity, it is, um, uh, it is uh, pictured in this way. Um, and uh, this graph is um, so-called Delzart click graph, uh, which means that um, if uh, two uh, vertices uh, are connected, so which means that the two states are, are orthogonal, then uh, they are contained in the same number of uh, bases. Uh, so um, in this case, uh, this C is one, but we can also have some examples of Nublake POVMs for which um, this C is equal to two. And uh, why uh, these Nublake POVMs are interested for us? Well, because in this case, um, this, um, this set of uh, linear um, equations that describe the, the, the affine space uh, A uh, can be replaced by this, by this simple um, set of uh, equations that uh, if we sum the probabilities over uh, bases, uh, then we always get the over n. Uh, so in this case, uh, here uh, we've got the sum of the probabilities over any basis is uh, one over nine, uh, but we've got here 27 bases and we need just 21 uh, linear equations. So here we've got uh, six uh, blue uh, bases that we can get rid of and still uh, obtain a system of uh, 21 uh, linearly independent equations. Um, uh, however, the problem here is that there is not uh, much, um, there is not, not many examples of uh, such POVMs. Uh, actually, um, apart from mutual and bias bases, which we know that they exist in every prime power dimension, uh, we've got only four examples in dimensions four, five, six, and 28. So that's not. Um, um, so, so our, our result is not um, very uh, general in this sense. Um, okay. Um, here is uh, something about this um, primal equation, um, but I guess I ran out of time, so uh, <laughs> maybe um, I will leave it. Um, here, well, just maybe one um, one comment. Here is the equation that we had for SIGPOVM, and it, it can be easily generalized to any two design POVM. So the um, so it's nearly the same um, equation here. We just have here d over n instead of one over d, but. We see that one over d is actually d over n in case of CPOVM. Uh, but it turns out that we can also generalize it uh, for any morphophoric POVM. Uh, but um, we need also uh, the probability distributions uh, for the maximally uh, mixed uh, states. And um, so, so this is just, uh, we've got just this two, two more um, um, uh, objects. Two, two, two more objects uh, in, our, in our equation. Uh, so we, we produce a covariance matrix um, C and we take the deviations of the probability distribution 
um, from the one for the maximally mixed state and the primal equation can be written in this very um, simple form here. Uh, so, so that's the, the general idea um, behind uh, the morphophoric uh, POVMs and why, um, why we think that uh, they can um, replace sick POVMs uh, in the cubism approach uh, to the foundations of quantum theory. Um, okay, so um, to conclude, uh, as I said, uh, we can extend the formalism of complexes uh, by replacing the uh, sick POVMs with the morphophoric POVMs, and the intrinsic geometry of generalized complex needs to be the same as of the set of quantum states, but the external geometry uh, is, um, is something that we can uh, explore and we find out uh, very nice uh, properties here. And um, in particular, uh, we've got this uh, very nice algebraic um, expressions for the loop like to design POVMs. And I think the most important thing is that uh, we can derive the primal equation for morphophoric POVM that generalize uh, the Urgleichung known from the cubism. And um, now we work on some abstract generalizations uh, of this um, of this morphophoric city. So we take uh, abstract uh, state spaces and uh, we define the morphophoric measurement on these abstract state spaces and we um, try to um, explore uh, what, uh, what, what is really all about what the morphophoricity is all about. Okay, uh, just a little bit, some bibliography and uh, that's all. Thank you for the attention and sorry for um, some few minutes more. Uh, no worries Thank really. Uh, thanks for, for a nice talk, Anya. Uh, we have time, no time for questions, comments uh, to the speaker. Uh, uh, I have one uh, general question. Like so, uh, 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 all of those considerations were kind of motivated by the uh, concepts from cubism, right? Uh, and I would like to ask, like, uh, for some uh, comments about, uh, let's say, philosophy behind this. In a sense that, like, uh, what, what is kind of the philosophical motivation for, uh, for considering those uh, cuplexes? <laughs> um, I, I'm not the best person to ask this question because I'm a mathematician and I don't really care about philosophy behind this uh, cubism. Um, sure. uh, but I found these um, cuplexes to be, to be some nice from the mathematical point of view. And that's, uh, that's why I started to, 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 in, to investigate whether we can generalize something, because that's what mathematicians do, they generalize. Um, but um, there is plenty of uh, works about cubism and, oh, they use so many difficult words. And um, I, I'm just not uh, really um, a specialist in, in, in philosophy and especially in the, the philosophical aspects of cubism. So I'm sorry that I'm sure, not going of course. to um, uh, explain further here this um, to you. But um, I see that Wojtek Swomczyński joined us. So maybe he can ask for something more. An informationally complete uh, POVM. But here we, um, we use this uh, property that um, well, it's somehow hidden here that um, this property that uh, this um, POVM is connected with this tight frame. So that some inverses uh, of some operators uh, are just the same operators. And so, so that's, uh, I mean, 
we, we do not have to take an, an inverse here or something like that. It's just, uh, we just put some probabilities and we, we obtain a simple formula uh, for, for the other probabilities. And, that, and that's also the case here. In this, in this equation, uh, on the uh, left hand side, you have a, a probability of one measurement and on the right uh, hand side, you have the probability of, the, of, this, of this basic measurement, yes, um, of this morphophoric measurement. So this equation says that there is a simple formula which uh, relates uh, one with the, with the other. Uh, and uh, it is clear that uh, such a relation exists because if the measurement is infor inform informationally complete, then uh, if you have a statistics, you have a state. But uh, what is uh, surprising here is that uh, the formula is so simple without these inverses and, and, and so on. And that is unexpected, I think. It's, 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 it is not, no longer like Bayes formula. It, it, it does not resemble Bayes formula anymore, but still it's linear and simple. Okay, any more questions and comments? Anya or the project, or Professor Zonczyński. Um, so, okay, I have maybe a, uh, a silly, uh, one more, I mean, silly question. I actually forgot, uh, like, if I am uh, like a projective to design and I have uh, these squared elements, is it equivalent to, uh, to being a, a, a sick? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. I see. I see. So, so, so in this case, when n is equal to d square, the only example is seek POBM. Okay. And but it's in a sense it is uh, it is a situation when this geometry, as Anya said, is not so interesting because uh, everything is inside the the simplex and. Uh, in more general case is in, in, in this affine plane and this geometry is, is more uh, nice from mathematical, not more nice, more interesting from mathematical point of view because we have two uh, polytopes which are dual and not, but not necessarily identical and it's a lot of things to, to, to play with. And actually what is interesting here is that because what I uh, showed you was just the image for the um, to design POVMs. Uh, but it is nearly the same if we replace it with any morphophoric POVM. So if we have this um, probability distribution um, of the uh, maximally mixed state anywhere in the simplex, so this affine plane is not necessarily central, it not necessarily goes for the center of the simplex. Uh, we still have the same properties um, connecting the, uh, these polytopes that they are still dual. And while it is quite um, easy to, to understand it um, for the two design POVMs, I mean to if, if you think of it, you can see it, why it is geometrically in, uh, looks, um, why it geometrically looks that way. Uh, we cannot see why, uh, why it happens in this general case. I mean, we can calculate it, but, but geometrically it is for us still not clear why, why it's so nice. So that's something. But, okay, I, I, I got confused because I, I thought that Ah, because like if you know that your state, that your effects are rank one, then it's the same as being uh, uh, like to design. But you have uh, like your morphophobic measurements that they are more general because they may not come from rank one. Uh, and and okay. in this situation, yeah. the results of, of probabilities for maximally mixed state uh, should mm -hmm. not be equal. 
Mm -hmm. Sure, sure, I understand. Uh, right. Also, if you take mm -hmm. if you take a to design POVM and uh, add some classical noise to it, uh, then it still is a morphophoric POVM, and this image is just uh, uh, moved right. and scaled in this affine uh, space. Mm -hmm. But still, this property that these um, polytopes are dual, but now with respect to this other um, sphere, is still um, still false. So that's so. So the geometrical image here is very interesting, and um, in some sense non trivial. I, I I still don't understand uh, a lot of things here. Mm -hmm. Right. But uh, no, I'm like um, okay, maybe right. So okay, I'm a bit confused still. With, okay, this is like let's say just let's say people that uh, it's just like a discussion part. So, but like if you if you just take a standard uh, POVM and uh, adds noise to it, uh, mm -hmm. it's it stops being external, but it will be. Uh, more for morphophobic, while yeah. not being a uh, POVM, right? So you can, in practical, mm -hmm. it won't be an external one uh, if you start to add noise to it, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. still, we'll have this. Okay, but because uh, what you get mm -hmm. is uh, is this um, um, this probability range is just. Um, uh, shrinked and maybe moved somewhere, but it's still of the same shape. Right. So it, but it, it is easy to explain this for d equal to. For d equal to, it is just a ball. The, the, the space of of of, sure. of 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 states of, of or mixed states, just a ball. So uh, the morphophoric measurement is like uh, putting uh, a ball inside the simplex and okay. if it is a for three-dimensional simplex is just putting the ball in the middle of, of, of it it's, and this is just the, the CPOVM but in more general case you can put a ball anywhere in the much larger simplex uh, the, the ball is always uh, three dimensional, but the simplex can be uh, much can can have much more dimensions. So yeah, but but also but also if we stay with this uh, three dimensional simplex and we add some noise to the CPO VM, uh, then we just uh, shrink this ball and move somewhere. But it's it's still inside this simplex. But not, it's, not it's, necessarily it's, in the middle. Not necessarily. Yeah, in the not necessarily in the middle, but it's still the ball. There, there is somewhere smaller mm -hmm. and 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 anywhere in 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 the in the in the simplex. Right. Mm -hmm. But the okay. whole theory works. Still works. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So okay. In particular, you can have a, just a bunch of uh, crazy non-extremal POVMs that uh, that that would be moromorphic it's just it just suffices to shrink this ball enough and then shift like move it inside the uh, mm -hmm. like this probability simplex so to say mm -hmm. okay. okay ah interesting uh, ah. but of course this shrinking and moving must be connected because uh, this ball must be inside the simplex of course of course sure, sure i understand Right. Just okay. One more crazy. Okay. This is like totally like very like one more cra crazy question. So just you mentioned like you when you go with the uh, that 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 those uh, morphomorphic measurements that are like to the, related to designs if the rank, rank uh, of effects is one. So how uh, did you think maybe about this uh, uniform POVM? Like if you take it's some specific measurement, it's infinite number of outcomes in which you measure. So like every pure state in some sense, like you, it's like infinite design. Mm -hmm. uh, how like like uh, 
Okay, like, okay, like how would geometry look there? Uh, yeah. Of the, of the surely, surely, surely this must be much more complicated algebraically. Yeah. But maybe still possible. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> sure. I, I'm not sure if it's useful for anything, just. <laughs> uh, right, right. Because in some sense, it's like infinity. The, yeah, mm -hmm. infinite design, this, this guy. Mm -hmm. uh, right, so just in other words, how, like what properties of, uh, how to see in, in probability, how, what is the name that's used? Like, uh, like the image under the P of the probability, like you, you, you take- Probability this, range? Probability range, yes. So how probability range start, start to look like for higher and higher designs, in other words, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, uh, yeah, just why well, of course ask such a question. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks a lot again. Uh, Aya, uh, thank you, Professor, for, for joining us. Uh, uh, I guess there are no further questions, so uh, let's thank the speaker again. Uh, yeah. and thank you. Uh, thanks for thank joining you. us thank from you. Krakow, and yeah, see you all uh, next week. <laughs>